All right, they've like got palaces here, like most cities have post offices. Nobility from all over Europe used to build their homes here, but I'm heading right into the nerve center of the Habsburg Empire and the biggest of all, the Hofburg Palace. <laughs> was, it falls to Austria to command the whole universe. The imposing Hofburg Palace reflects the aspirations of 20 generations of emperors who ruled over 50 million subjects speaking 40 different languages from this enormous fortress. Oh my God, look at that thing. This crown was built in the beginning of the 1600s. And it's just encrusted with like expensive jewels and gold. And the amazing thing about it is, it's not even like the main crown. It's not the coronation crown, that's in Nuremberg. This is like your everyday crown that you wear in the household when you're hoovering up. When the Habsburg family fled into exile, they took most of their jewels with them and left this lot behind. I mean, there's an amethyst the size of a potato. So imagine what the collection must have been like before they split it up. And this is the prize of the Habsburg collection. It's 2,860 carats worth of emerald. It's the biggest one in the world and it took two years to cut. And when they finished, they turned it into that, which is a salt cellar. As well as the expensive worldly goods, they've also got the monopoly on the spiritual ones. That there, apparently, is the tooth of John the Baptist. Then there's a little, like, a little chipping from Christ's manger, and up there is a piece of the tablecloth from the Last Supper. See that there? That is the actual spear, apparently, that pierced Christ while he was on the cross. And that is actually part of the cross. But I read somewhere, right? If all the pieces of wood that claim to be the cross of Christ were put together, they'd actually make 40 different crosses. So who knows? The Hofburg also houses secret treasures underground. When Vienna was surrounded by a city wall, the only way to expand was by digging down. Barbara showed me around the cellars beneath the palace. The How deep was it then? Maximum of five stories. So, God, so what are you saying? There was like an underground city? It was a city underneath the city. Wow, there's loads of statues, huh? But these aren't actually statues, these are the positives. Oh, right, all right. So the artists would make these first, yes. take them to the... And if he liked it, then they'd make a big Make the statue. real monument out of metal, right. ceramic. This is... Who's this? That's Mozart. That's Mozart, Mozart is it? Adios, Mozart. Wow. So, so the artists would go, look, this is, my, this is the busk of you which I made. Do you want a big one done? Or yeah, there is a big one with legs yeah. and a huge monument in the Imperial Garden. Ah, I see. I like it, but I want it with legs and hands. God, so what, what are they all doing down here then? It's just but storage. It's storage. Whatever the city of Vienna or in the old days the Imperial family didn't need, yeah. they put them down here in their wide cellars. God, Barbara, I think I've done all my sightseeing now. The empire finally crumbled at the end of World War I, and overnight Vienna was reduced to being just a provincial capital city. The Habsburgs' last display of power was to build the final wing of their palace, the monumental Neuerberg. But it was made famous not because of the Habsburg family, but by the world's most notorious fascist, Adolf Hitler. Hitler was actually born in Austria, and at the age of 17, he moved to Vienna to become an artist. But he got rejected twice at the art school because his work was inadequate. But to a letter to his friend, he said, maybe it was fate, and maybe I'm reserved for some bigger purpose in my life. He swept the streets, he lived in a homeless hostel, and after six years of poverty and artistic failure, he gave it all up and moved to Germany to make his name there. 
The next time Hitler came back to Vienna was in 1938, but this time he was at the head of the German army. He came to this balcony and announced to a crowd of over 250,000 that Austria is now part of the Third Reich. Austria was the first country to fall under Hitler's spell, but after the war they were quick to retract their enthusiasm and claimed to be the first victims of the Nazi regime.